Hey everyone, Paul Daniels here again as usual. Well, first day back of the official working 2020. So I guess I better put some effort in it and try and make some money because that's the only reason I'm here, to make money. If you didn't want to make money, I'd be doing other things. Like watching YouTube or, I don't know, doing some gardening maybe. Let's see, iPhone... Six two oh two oh oh one oh two. There we go. Just clearing up some mess from last night. The old shame stick still defeats me. Such is life. Alright. YouTube notifications are wonky. Oh, what happened? You still ended up here? You should be happy. Hey Corey, thank you. Audio off sync, Blumenek. Okay, here we go. Okay, hopefully that should fix that. One of these days, that problem will be solved. Unfortunately, it's not my domain of software development to be fixing up that fault. I wish it was. I have done work in Open Broadcaster before, but the audio section and the intricacies of the Linux crap fest that is known as Jack or Pulse Audio prevents me from making any real headway. It's like it's one of those great theoretical systems that ended up best being more complicated than it need to be, I suspect. Maybe in another 10 years, computers will be powerful enough to handle what they did. Uh. Man, this desk is a mess. Late night partying with the hot air. Ah, I was wondering where my torch went to. Ah, uh, Greg, uh, the problem with um, YouTube at the moment is some for some reason when I set up the new stream it doesn't give me the option to do a stream immediately it uh, simply just says when do you want to schedule and I'm like I want to skip I want it now but it doesn't have a button or anything to simply let you uh, schedule immediately but uh, so all you can do is you just sort of go well, well whatever you want YouTube and then you just hit your streaming button on open broadcaster and then when YouTube sees that you've got data coming in for that stream, it's like, oh, oh okay, you want to do it now. And then that's when you can say, oh, let's go live. So it confuses the heck out of everybody. I don't know whether it's just because of my setup or, yeah, really unsure. Uh, I'm just going to clean up the desk a little bit more. Okay. Come on, come on. You got enough in you. Slow and steady, maybe? There we go. This is just soap uh, detergent, things like that. It's not anything like isopropylene. The isopropylene comes in later. There. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great, I lost that driver. Fantastic. Sure, I didn't need it. Oh, it's my tweezers, that's why. Okay. Keep dropping frames. Uh, not much I can do about that. Um, I'm actually not showing any frames dropped on my end, so let's just blame YouTube. Maybe it's my upstream, I'm not sure, but Open Broadcaster is not complaining at all, and I'm only running at 40%, and that's on a 6 megabit stream. I'm just going to have to live with it, I'm afraid. All right. 
right. A lot of buffering here. Hmm. Well, we'll keep an eye on it, but really there's pretty much nothing I can do. I've noticed I am on some sort of dynamic variable rate encoding at the moment. Maybe I can have a look at that. Instead of fixed rate. Stream, output, video bitrate, 6 megabit, encoder, software, of course. Doesn't give me any other option. Okay, to preset very fast. I could try to go to super fast. I'll lose some quality though. I might just leave it for now and see how we go. Anyway, let's get into the repair because I do want to get this thing down. Get the microscope turned on before I get too much further. Hey Steve, Johnny Chang. Okay, I already popped this lid off earlier when I was checking things and we can already see there's a huge chunk of green goo there and it doesn't take a genius to see that we've got major issues over here so it's going to be a case of just take this thing out and become the janitor with it it's the whole backlight section has been completely trashed not sure what else is going to have water damage. It does look like it's just come in through that area there. Uh, it's been sitting around a while. There's mold growing on everything else there. Yeah, first thing we do is get batteries disconnected, get their data out. At least I will not be responsible for the loss of their data. And get the battery out because that's just easier to work with. Yeah, YouTube needs to up its game. Oh no, that damage on the trackpad too? Right. That's not what I wanted. Main reason why I don't want that is because that means... You know, is this becoming a beyond economical repair type situation. That's that keyboard damaged as well, quite possibly. Uh, let's get it out. It's a pain when you can fix the boards, but the economics just aren't there when this like if you've got screen damage or things like that keyboard damage so I should check to see if hopefully the connectors okay okay the backlight has had some corrosion on the pins of the screen connector flex uh, this is turning into a bad start Yeah, I mean, that's a real... That's... Probably going to be repairable. It'll need a bit of cleaning up. But it should be repairable. And this all here isn't a major problem. It looks nasty. A new connector and it should be okay. Imagine at times it's a bit like when people turn up at the hospital, triage, and they have to do the triage, and you've got people covered in all sorts of blood and whatnot, but maybe it's not as bad as it seems once you're used to it. Unable to set brightness. Oh my goodness, seriously. Yep. <sighs> High contrast day. Hey, Pedro. Alright, we'll just keep pulling this stuff out. We'll get to the end of it. Let's see what our options are. Why has nobody made a humidity relay which cut off power? Um, 
I guess it's a complicated thing, and I. It's complicated in the sense that the last thing you want are uh, false positives. A person doesn't want their laptop shutting down just because the spouse just came out of the shower and the hot steam came running into the room. So for reasons like that they just steer clear and they simply say do not operate in an environment where the humidity is greater than 85% non-condensing. I need my T8 now. Use my T8 to loosen up. We'll just take these hinge screws out. The hinge is still attached on the third one. So that we can pull the Wi Fi back. So we can get to the T5 holding the heatsink down. Because far too many people forget that. And they go, yeah, rip it out. Or they forget to pull the Wi Fi cables out of the way and they just drive the T5 driver against those cables and then they wonder why their Wi Fi sucks afterwards. Gotta get that screw up, Paul. Okay, here we go. Hopefully we don't have too much trash on the back side. Doesn't look too bad there. Be interesting to see if maybe we can revive that trackpad. Have I interacted with Lewis lately? Um, as in the last 24 hours or something like that? I mean, he's normal enough. All things... Normal enough within what I'm expecting from him. Other than the fact that he's doing strange apologies to me. Let's have a look at the backlight area. Hilariously, that's fine there. So it looks like this liquid damage really has only come in on over the top. But, as usual, I will go over the board to make sure there isn't some other... It looks like a bit of corrosion got picked up by the fan or something and blown around. Does waterproofing the innards of the MacBook with clear lacquer make it impervious to water damage? Unfortunately not. There are simply too many joins, crevices. Uh, okay, we've got some damage up here. It's in a bit of a dead zone, but it could still influence the behavior of the machine. But that will, yeah, as long as none of those are essential veers going through to somewhere else, that will clean up in the ultrasonic. It's too impractical to do sort of any liquid proofing of that nature. And in most cases, it's, we're sort of, uh, you're trying to prevent a l low chance type event. I mean, sure, every machine you see come in here often has, okay, we've got some more damage here, often has liquid damage or something like that. But you got to remember there's the thousands upon thousands of others that are not suffering that out there doing their job all the time. Alright, some more there. Again, nothing too problematic. Let's say, yeah, trashed out this section and that trackpad could be stopping it from turning on as well. So we're just going to go all janitorial on this, get it up to standard. Take the Wi Fi module off too. Wow, camera, you suck. Let's 
turn off autofocus since you haven't been focusing on the back of my head, I'd say. <laughs> okay, Paz, you thought you did? Yeah, just subtle, subtle hints of corrosion there, eh? I think he is apologizing because he feels bad about all the negativity he's made towards you in your software. He made a video about it and how the joke had gone too far. Yes, I saw that video. I, I even left a comment on it. Hey, Brian. From Sunderland. Where about some Brizzy are you? A metabolis uh, death bombs here even. Alright. First thing I'll do is normally I'd flux and boil, but there is so much corrosion there I actually wanna just brush it down with a bit of alcohol water mix. Which would be great if I had some alcohol and water mix. Damn it. Uh, let's see. Some alcohol. Some water. Funnel. I should have a funnel around here. Damn it. Same old story of life. Right, I'm just going to have to do this without a funnel. Still busy writing code. Uh, what are you writing, writing today? the hell? Paul goes wild. Fortunately at least this is almost empty so I can get away with doing it like this. Normally I have a nice four inch funnel or something like that. <laughs> Makes it easy to be fast in the pour in. Okay, we'll just take our water. Oops, looks like we've got liquid damage on the MacBook now. That's not going to hurt it. Damn it. Just going off everywhere. Okay. Squirt it into my keyboard. Now you're probably wondering maybe why is he using a water mix rather than just straight alcohol? Because I'm not sure what caused the corrosion and some things aren't always soluble in alcohol, pure alcohol. So you add the water and it gives you a much better chance of getting whatever it is. It's not a huge amount of water, but it's enough to get in there and get the substance off and then the alcohol can do its job. At least you showed your honesty when you were worried about Oreo. Oh, Jane, um, yeah. You I read the comment, makes sense. I'm just curious what you mean when you say he's acting about how you'd expect him to. Um, well, given everything he's got on his plate and a few other matters, which I prefer not to sort of talk too much about, it's up to him to talk about them. 
Any doesn't like to talk about it, so that's it. So we'll leave it at that. But no, I mean, I, I've got no reason to be concerned for Lewis at this point. Scratchy nose. Why? Why always scratchy nose? At least you showed your honesty when you were worried about Oreo. You're talking about when they were putting him in the shop. And I wasn't too pleased about that. And look at that. When you wash it off, it doesn't look quite so bad. It's still bad enough, but it doesn't look quite so bad. Just recently watched a video from the channel Half is Internet explain that Australia has one of the most complicated time zones within one country. Really? No. Well, I didn't realise that. I think around the Adelaide area or something, it gets a bit weird. Let's see if that fuse is alive. Fuse is good. I might replace these caps, even though they're not shorted. That level of if you get the corrosion to the point where it's eaten the end cap away, this um, metal bits in the end, then it's probably a smart thing to just remove and replace it when you can. Otherwise, it's only just going to come back and infest your uh, workshop three months later. Yeah, so let's say clean sweep of pretty much everything here and start again this should be fun scratchy nose blimey heck I'm starting to get annoyed with my scratchy nose on streams Most of the time is spent just getting the board up to temperature. So that these mechanical hold downs will actually let go. Got the flipping wrong nozzle on it. Damn iPhones. Hey Tim. Ah. Little oh, six millimeter nozzle is no good for this stuff. I've got to wait for it to cool down. Mm. 
uh, tell us when it comes to relying on you know, uh, one part causing the complete failure of a system, the reality is that's going to be the case pretty much almost regardless of what piece of equipment you got. In fact, it's one of the engineering nightmares when you have to try and produce a system that is capable of being redundant uh, to certain kinds of failures because you almost always will have some single point of failure, almost always. And trying to engineer your way around that becomes a very cost prohibitive exercise. So when people go on about how, how dare the MacBook have this one resistor that can get corroded and it's dead, it's like that's basically every single piece of electronics on this planet for consumers at the best. There's nothing unusual about that. That's entirely normal. Hell, sometimes we engineer it to be that way for the sake of like, oh, let's make a fuse. And if that fuse should blow, oh no, everything's going to stop working. So it's entirely normal. It's not an engineering failure. It's a, um, it's a reality that you deal with. If you want a system that can handle multiple points of failure, then you're going to be paying right through the nose and a few other orifices for it. Yeah, so I've got my 9mm nozzle now. Unfortunately the board cooled back down while I was ranting. There we go. Well, you could probably try and hot swap a nozzle, but I dare you to put... You can get it off, but I dare you to put the new one on. Without burning your fingertips. That's a pretty clean sweep. Hey, Ignacio. Hey, we're on stamps. And Richard T, Vancouver. Oh, excellent. Well, in spite of how bad and nasty that all looked, it's looking a lot better now. Hopefully this uh, LED feedback return is okay. It looks like it should be. So we'll just clean up this and put a new... We'll put down the parts and put a new connector down. The reason why I put the connector down last is because when you're trying to put these bigger parts down, you can get a bit of a side blow going on and it will uh, melt the plastic a little bit. So better to put the little bits and pieces on first. But I mean, I understand why people like to make those comments, certain YouTubers, because it does sort of create the whole sense of, well, they did a shoddy job there, and yeah, it, it's the great collective uh, anti-Apple banner type thing. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm not a great Apple fan myself, but that's predominantly more on the business practices side than anything else. And the fact that marketing interferes far too often in the design process. And we end up with some hideous contraptions like the butterfly keyboards. And there are other things that are distinctly other companies' fault, like AMD or NVIDIA. I'm a bit of a moderate in that sort of area. I tend to sort of go, well, it's not entirely, it's not just Apple's fault there. Or it's not the engineering that's bad. Always. Sometimes it is, I'll definitely say that. Sometimes they deserve a good smack over the head. But then again, so does pretty much every company that manufactures anything. 
You can't tell me there's a car company on this planet that has not produced a lemon at some point. You have to keep in mind without Apple, you have to find something else to do. Well, that's just it, Warren. I mean, that's why I'm... Um, no, it's like, I've got no problem with them. But to be fair, I was doing other things too before they came along. This whole repair, gold mine, gold rush. Speaking of which, I wish a few people would get the hell out of it. Not because they're chewing up my jobs per se, but just simply because they're ruining the jobs. There's a lot of people that say, oh, well, you know, before Lewis and Jessa came along with the whole repair stuff, what were you doing? You weren't, you weren't doing apples, so how can you stand there and try to say that you ought to have the right to repair those, but other people can't? And it's like, well, I've been doing repair work for many years before. This is just a new um, set of devices that we're repairing, but the actual repair work, although it's slightly different from the previous requirements, it's still repair work. As opposed to people who've never picked up a soldering iron before, uh, now clambering into the market, picking up all the easy jobs, ruining them, giving us a bad name, it's starting to, it's starting to get a bit annoying, that's all. Now, it's not to say all new people are annoying, that's not true. It's just that there's a lot of people coming into it with the intent, the wrong intent and the wrong mindset more than anything else. The wrong mindset is the big thing. I mean, you get these people that just sort of, oh, that resistor's gone. They just crash through stuff and go and ruin it for everyone else. Yeah, I'm feeling a bit grumpy today about stuff. Okay, looks like a couple of these resistors are going to have to go. Um, I've repaired CRTs before and I was never a great fan of repairing CRTs because the damn things, man, do they kick. I mean, you try your best, you try to always remember to discharge the flyback and things like that, but every now and then you just do something a little bit wrong and they leave you with a half paralyzed arm for a week. And they're heavy, and yeah, they just weren't fun. Not that, not that repairs have to be fun. I mean, it is a job after all. So, if, damn it, too much rage, and now I'm making myself look like a noob again. Oh wait, I am. Yeah, the 1466 is a lovely machine to work on. Yeah, Stellaria, I don't know what it, it's like. It it builds itself back up. I, yeah, I don't know why it does it, but it's like it picks up stray fields. And so you go back and you just grab onto that damn wire accidentally and then kablam it's like okay I'm gonna take the rest of the week off because I just didn't almost die then Have you implemented the new mini monitor? I have, it's uh, right in front of me in fact, and I'm going to be getting a couple more of them because I quite like this one. Is that line transformers were a bitch if they went bang in the CRTs? Yeah. So many things on the CRT TVs, I am so glad that we don't have to deal with anymore. I love that it's all digital now. For the, yeah, and the controller boards all sufficiently separate from 
particularly the tuners. Ah. Oh. And you'd get so many intermittent faults. And sit there for ages watching this damn TV. So what are you doing now? What are you doing now? You're not doing anything wrong. And then the customer, of course, starts getting niggly because it's taken you three weeks and the intermittent fault still hasn't showed up. So you hand it back to them, then within 10 seconds it's faulty. And you're like, yep, thank you very much, universe. Alright. Let's add some shonky do amounts of solder onto these pads. It doesn't matter, that's not nicely flowing because we're going to reflow it anyway. Anyway, don't, don't get me wrong in thinking that I don't want any new people into the market. I mean, we need new people all the time. It's just a case of you want the people with the right mindset into the market. But I guess the market has to work itself out. But I think it's going to get to the point where we're going to have to start really calling out the idiots. Do they like Apple products in Australia? Yes, Apple is quite popular here in Australia. Yeah, and if well, I mean, you can still get the 1466 anyway. I mean, it's, I still see it down there for um, sale at Office Works and places like that. Yeah, Ignacio, you're right. Yeah, there's a lot of people who just blindly hate and they don't know why they're hating. I mean, fine, be like that. But, oh man, I just ran over my tips. Uh, I knew I shouldn't have left them there. Like I said, it's the company, the company culture is what I'm not keen on with Apple. But their products, when their products work, they're quite good. Certainly better than most PCs. Okay, well I think we're pretty much just going to flog all the parts from this. This is for a 34, 30, this is a 3437 board, but their backlight sections are all much muchins. Just scrape away that crap. Right, so that's our donor. Back in your day, RCA, I remember that company. 40 kilovolt in the TV, yeah, no thanks. It's like with valves as well, I can't stand valve systems. I know, that's probably sacrilege. But then again, I'm not very, really being opposed to being sacrilege. Yeah, this is a 165, Aaron. Yeah, people sort of go, oh, you're supposed to love Valve stuff. And it's like, yeah, I'm not a fan. But Valve stuff's the greatest. And it's like, it's spooky and it's weird. It gives me the heebie-jeebies. It's worse than a ghost in the shell. It's something else. It's like a demon in hell trapped in a little glass container. So I'm curious if the scanning or the transformer in the CRT that makes the whining noise. Uh, well, it actually it depends, really. It depends on what's got the air gap in it at the time. Sometimes it's the coils. Sometimes it's. Uh, Okay, I'm going to lose my focus now. One piece at a time, Paul. Damn it, that one already had that. Great. 
I'll put that there as a spare. We'll call it a hot swappable spare. We'll just stick it on with one leg up in the air. And uh, if it fails, then the other one, the uh, extreme heat of the failure will cause it to melt the solder and it will drop down and take its place. Is it possible to get rid of coil wine with a big CRT or graphics card? Yeah, it is. Usually with some uh, mechanical dampening. If you pop the if you pop the coils properly, that it should shut them up. And the definition of properly is they're potted to the point where they shut up. And if that still doesn't work, you just put the whole thing and case it in epoxy. Yeah. Yeah. And then of course your graphics card will overheat very nicely. <laughs> oh, you were there too. Man, not really paying full attention to what parts I need. You've got to get that small cap by the... that's missing there. How hilarious. So I'm picking up the parts that I don't need and the parts I do need are missing. Sounds like a good day to me. How did you learn to fix motherboards? Um, well, I started out watching some videos, but Mostly it was a case of get the motherboard, try to get the schematic, at least back then. Nowadays at least you have the pleasure of an actual board view, which is a, believe me, it's a huge blessing having a board view. And you just sort of progressively, you know, um, expand your experiences bit by bit. You start out fixing something simple. And you go from there. It's not something, it's not like the Matrix, unfortunately, where you can just download the solutions into your head and you're done. Unfortunately, reality is far more painful. Yeah, I know that blob of solder is really poking out and all that, but there's no point cleaning it up at this point because we're just going to dump a heap of hot air down here anyway. These are zero ohm resistors, I think. I'll still pick the right ones though. I did go to university for four years, but what I learnt there really is nothing to do with any of this. Um, I did computer science there. And that's not even really programming. It's more... If you go to university for learn programming, you've gone to the wrong university. Because that's not why you go to university. You go to practical school for that. You go to university for working out things like which, way, which algorithm is the best for determining which page swapping we're going to do for this system under what load. and you know, um, Then you have to prove it through mathematical means and things like that. At university, computer science really should actually just be a um, math... It should really fall under the math department, for the most case.
Well, Suits, now, you see, I'll disagree on that um, University of Life teaches you better. I think it's a case of you need both, depending on what... Well, it depends on your career choice, what you want to do. Now, for me, there is a lot of stuff that I learned at university that I will probably never learn in the School of Life. At least, not very quickly. But then there's also, of course, a lot of stuff from the School of Life that you would you never get taught at university. And, yeah, that's the way it should be. Which is why most decent university courses will make sure that you get... Uh, you spend your holidays as an intern at some place getting your life experience. Because a lot of the stuff that you... A lot of stuff that you should be learning at university will take you half a lifetime or so to acquire in the field normally. And that's why you're going to university, so that you can get the collective experiences of the other people's lifetimes all condensed into a quick time span. But things like repair work, this sort of stuff, it, yeah, you don't go to university for that. Is there any reason you mostly do MacBooks? James Robson, mostly because they're the ones that people were willing to pay for. So you pay $2,000 for a... This is a nice one. Oh wow, they actually left the CPU on this one, although they drilled through it, but... Maybe I can cut this PCH out and use it for some of my other ones. I'm just kidding, you can't do that, but... It's sad that I have to actually say I'm just kidding. Uh, mostly, people with MacBooks have the income or are willing to spend the money to preserve their investment. That's basically what it comes down to. Whereas if you've got someone who's spent $300 on a PC, they're not going to want to spend another $300 to get it repaired. It's quite simply illogical. The other thing is, of course, MacBooks, you actually have all the board views and things like that. Whereas with PCs, you're lucky if you get a board view that's fairly close to what you're trying to repair. Most of the time, it's got a few misleading bits and pieces of data on it, more than usual. This is taking forever to do, do this swap over. Yeah, when it comes to this side of my electronics, there's not a lot of the university experience applied in any of this. But when it comes to my programming side, then there is a lot more of the university stuff in there. And also with the um, electronics design work, like when I'm designing a manufacturing a part, a device, then yeah, there's a bit of university work going in on that. Uh, time to clean up this. Thank you, Pedro. The trouble is, there's always this stigma from one side to the other. And it doesn't really end up helping anybody. So, like, you get the people who are overly invested in um, purely academic learning such as university and they look down on the people doing the work in the field and then you've got the people in the field looking down on the people at university saying they've got no real experience and stuff and meanwhile everybody forgets or everybody misses the fact that we actually need both and if you take the time to appreciate that you need both then you'll actually get a lot further in life and you'll make less enemies, that's for sure. The only people you make enemy of, enemy, enemies of at that point then is basically the people that you really don't want to deal with anyway. Chuck 
Chinese have perfected the donor swapping. How do you mean? Oh, come on, hacker. Give me more power, Captain. I need more power. Those traces are a little shonky there. Yeah, they're good now. Yeah, the hex deck can be a little bit rough. I'm still paying mine off. Yeah, let's see. Okay, I need a new connector. Thank you, Travis, for giving her all she's got. These are the crappy ones. They don't have the mechanical keying on them. I mean, I can use them, but I really prefer to have the mechanical keying if I can. Damn it. And my new ones haven't arrived yet. going through all these in the hopeless hope that I actually have one around now. Damn it. But it's one I had one left. The most clear example of what people without proper high education can do with high technology is the oil company PDVSA which purged out all the petroleum engineers and put in... Uh, let's see, this is going to go badly. Oh, I think you guys got the keying? Yes, I do have them. Like I said, you can use the ones without the mechanical keying on them. It just means they're going to squirm around a little bit. Are these customer laptops? This is a customer one. This is a job that's come in this morning. All the more reason for me to use the nicer connector. Hey Wade, how's it going? Alright. Get some heat into that pad, tack it down with a terrible little spot of solder. Yep. Nice and dodgy. Perfectly Australian, nice and dodgy. Alright. And do the same up the upper end. Let the pad get hot. Keep pushing that solder onto it and hoping that you're going to get lucky. Yep, that'll do. Nice and dodgy. Now we can do what matters. Yeah, the pump definitely makes it easier.
The trouble is when you buy them, they usually don't tell you, or they'll show you a picture with the ones with the keying on them. And then when you get them, you find they don't have them on them, and you're like, yeah, thanks guys. It's kind of completely changed my hopes and dreams there. Well done. Now all of these solder joints are looking really bad right now. Particularly the ones on the heavy metal ground plane attachments. But they all get fixed up shortly. Okay. Mike Blanco, thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Two bucks, that gives me a coffee. Homemade coffee, and there will be a good coffee. I, I use a stove top system. And right now, these days, I'm cooking up with uh, Vittoria Oreo, I think. Coffee. It's already pre-ground, I know, I know, that's that's the dirty way of doing it, but at 4.30 in the morning when I'm being woken up by the kids, I just sort of, I just want to be able to get myself a spoonful of heaven, shove it into the pot, throw it on the stove, and not have to worry about grinding it up. Would you say soldering is just trial and error? Uh, initially, maybe. There is a degree of skill to it, and some people do get that skill, some people do not. It's a bit like painting or singing, I guess. There is a certain level to which you can train people up, but beyond that, if they don't have that inherent knack, then there's not much you can do. Okay, now, here comes the hot air assist, this is at 250, and it just makes things go like butter. I've got too much solder on those, but I'm not going to bother trying to take it off, because it'll just cause more drama. Those guys are fine. The two little intermittent taps here, I need to do them. The 250 just helps things get hot enough all around so that the solder can do its job and wick. There's a little bit too much solder on there. better. Zaku, um, I'll still debate that sometimes you do still have to have an in inherent ability. I'm not saying you can't do something if you don't have that, but I'm just sort of saying to really achieve a good result, like the top end type thing, it helps to have the inherent ability. Man, they are horrible looking resistors there. I mean, it's a bit like if you say take basketball. If you're, you know, some people just have that ability and sometimes physically they just have that ability and you can't expect a five foot two guy to succeed in basketball the same way 
that someone who's 6'6 six, six might be able to. It's not... I don't like the idea that all humans are equally the same, equally capable of the same things. I think we all have the capacity to do something great, but it doesn't mean that I'm gonna, my great thing is gonna be the same as someone else's great thing, no matter how much effort I put into it. I think you have to find your natural, what you got your natural impedance for, natural balance for, that's the key. Speaking of which, I've got to fix up that little doobie dacker. Yeah, I think there are just some things that you're going to be inherently best at, and other things that you're going to have to accept that you're okay at, but you're probably not capable of to the same degree that someone else is. Put some lead shielding over the CPU. What? That'll melt nicely. This is a really bad spot for that resistor. By you and your half. Oh, bottle of wine. We will do something nice with it. Do the cats count? Oh, what's the... Talent is about how fast you can adapt to changing circumstances. I would consider that to be more aptitude. If you've got good aptitude, you can adapt fast, but it doesn't necessarily, in my opinion anyway, doesn't mean you're specifically going to be exceedingly good at it. In fact, there are probably some people who have terrible aptitude, but they're inherently going to be superb at some particular task, but they're not capable of changing to some other task. Now, of course, you could bring that into the whole evolution concept of um, it's not the fittest of that survive, but rather the most adaptable that survive, in which case, yeah. The trouble is, once that transition happens, then the fittest for the new situation will outcompete the most adaptable. I guess it really comes down to semantics, you know. Aptitude I would consider to be your ability to learn. You, if you've just got that inherent capability of acquiring information, processing it in a way that's beneficial to your survival. Spectator, thank you. Looks like I'm going to have a wild party now. Still, these are things you can debate for many, many years. It's like string theory versus grand unified theory. But in fairness, everyone knows string theory is a load of bollocks. It's just a nice, convenient little in little secret club idea that got out of hand. Just going to flux and boil that area. It doesn't look that bad, but I just want to at least chew out any corrosion that might be hanging in there. You got to particularly watch this chip here. This is the PCH105 HSC switch, and it can hide corrosion under it. It can make your life a living hell. 
Oh, we've got someone from Korea here. Hello, Korean person. At least I'm presuming you're from Korea based on the characters of your name. I could be wrong. Good of a lot of things, master of none. Yeah, tranquil. I actually fall into the same category. Spend most of my life coming second for things. But all manner of things. There's a bunch of other junk I remember on this board somewhere else. I should be making everyone sick now with all the moving around. I know there was a couple of caps. Oh, there's this here. Yeah. There was something else as well. There was other junk lying around. Doug Wheeler. I've mastered several things I can't make a living doing. Uh, haven't we all? Most of what I'm seeing in chat is going to boil down to a discussion of terminologies. We've probably all got the same concepts in mind, but terminologies being used are just different. And I'm not going into that. I have a hard enough time arguing the, vil the usage of the letter U in honour and colour and neighbour. to various unrepenting souls. Looks like our Korean visitor isn't quite... maybe... Ah, that's where that junk was. Language barriers are fun. Speaking of which, one of these days, the way the world's going, I really need to learn Mandarin. Uh, Mandarin? Yeah, Mandarin. Yeah, I don't like you there. You're a main battery cap. And even though you're not giving me grief now... Oh, yeah, there we go. The end cap's starting to come off already. Get off out of here. Damn it, I'm melting things. Keyboard backlight connectors melting. Favorite, favorite, favorite programming language would be C. Not C++, not C sharp, nothing, just C. And preferably POSIX compliancy. Okay, that's not quite true of a... There isn't really such thing as POSIX C. But it's nice to have the POSIX support. And something like C11 or something like that. Okay. This one. Look at that. All those blobbed up there. Great. I'm going to melt this one too. It's not a problem if you melt these little end pieces because you can just break them off or take them off another working connector and swap them in. Why do you first see over C? Um, the purity of C, I guess. 
the fact that you can still get most things done with C with not too much more effort than a lot of languages. I mean, in honesty, these days I do tend to use um, Cified C++. So I'm kind of stealing the nice convenience of C++, typically templates like vectors and whatnot. And strings are useful too, i got to admit. Damn it, that sucked, Paul. Do that properly. Can't seem to get to... There we go. Now, Doug, I'm trying to pitch that Microsoft child, C sharp. The other thing is with C, C pretty much did what Java tried to do in terms of portability. And C was pretty much already doing that. Man, I really messed up that. It still works, but. It's unfortunate that it's a bit ugly, but it's the nature of what's going to happen when you start working on parts around here. These do not like heat at all. <coughs> Pardon me. And we've still got the trackpad issue. I might just have to replace it outright, which I'm not going to be happy about. Pardon me. I'm not going to be happy about because I don't have too many spares of those. No shortage of these damn hairs everywhere. JTAG looks perfectly good, so we're going to leave that there just to irritate some people. No harm in leaving a JTAG on the board. Sold a splatter there. Where, Pedro? There's sold a splatter everywhere. I would have been a fan of Python if they had simply added an alternative to their white space delimiting system. I do not like languages that have white space as an active um, bit of syntax. Funnily enough, Fortran wasn't too bad. But Fortran was different in the sense that it was more column based. Or at least you know, Fortran 77 was. I don't know about the latest ones. But uh, Python's obsession with forcing everyone to use active white space, it's just, it kills me. Now I know people say, oh, you know, if you do it right the first time, then it wouldn't, won't matter if, if you switch between editors and things like that. But therein is the key problem. Do it right the first time. Whoever does that in programming, obviously a programmer does not, um, <laughs> Yeah, there's not many programmers that do it right the first time. I know, I know, I'm being a little excessively cynical here. There are some people who do it right the first time. But they're usually so difficult to work with that they don't really tend to get employed much. In the meantime, everybody else has to now lug along their design choices. But that aside, you know, like I said, I would have been really happy to get involved with Python because it, I did like it. But I just kept button heads with that white space. Because I wanted something that could supplant my use of PHP for certain tasks. But for now, it's still PHP. Ignacio, oh, I'll take your money, all right. I will gladly do that, good sir. Without burning a hole in your pocket, perhaps. Oh, uh, that's right, we've got to fix this connector. Ah, uh, the plug. Did the customer also approve trackpad keyboard? Nope. And that's why it's going to be fun.
And if the screen is completely botched, then I'm just going to cry. Cry, cry, cry. Uh, things work a little differently here, Cape has. It's not like your terrifying New York store. We're a little more casual around here. And of course I don't have Lewis yelling at me. And if Lewis did try to yell at me, I'm pretty sure he'll know the sort of words he'll get back. Reminds me of a song I know. Yeah, I know, that's what I was thinking I have to replace it. Which is why I'm lamenting over it. Why are you telling me the things I already know, Copaz? Don't you know that's one of my pet peeves? New York City was deemed the rudest city in the USA, so uh, USA only, or the world? I don't know, I've never been there myself, so I can't judge. And I don't think Lewis is a good representative for New York in general. He seems at odds with a number of them. Not least of which he voted Trump. have Britney Spears toxic now. I was, I was thinking of something that uh, Australians would know it. Because am I ever gonna see your face again? No way, get... Yeah, people will know that one. Other rude cities didn't respond to the survey at all. <laughs> That's actually funny. That was a good one, Jonathan. Yeah, let's squeeze some of that flux in there. Why not? What are you getting trapped on? Seriously? There we go. Well, hopefully the screen works. Because that pretty much is the key. If the screen doesn't work, then it's just pack up and go home. Because no one's going to spend $500 on a replacement screen for this thing. Angels it was, yes. Some people can Google fast or know their history. Well, we've got a fan spin. Ah, that's always glorious. Why did I plug in the keyboard? I don't know. Because that's just going to be a killer. We don't have a bong yet, and I suspect... No, we'll let it do its thing. See if it comes up. Screen does appear to have energized. Yeah, 32 is a little young to know that song. I mean, even I was... I'm a bit young to know it. And I'm 47. Okay, so we've got a folder. We're alive. It's flashing, so it's good. Okay, screen's good. Thank God for that. So let's see what we can do about this trackpad, shall we? It's funny, the keyboard connector flippy thing just broke on me. So that was good because that was really our biggest concern is would the screen be alive, would the cable be alive, so. By the way, if you work on iPhone 7s and 8s and all that, get yourself one of these tri-wing drivers from Wera. They've got a weird number on them, it's like D3LUM, don't know why they've got that weird number, but they make working on 
those tri wing screws damn sight easier. Just trying to help you out. I didn't hear a bong, but then that doesn't mean anything. They could just have their audio settings down. I suppose I could do a frame reset, but then why? Okay, let us hope and pray. Oh man, the keyboard is a wreck. That keyboard is a wreck. I can already tell just by... Yuck. Need some dead weight here. I'm going to stick my iPhone on it. Now it looks pretty ugly, but I'm hoping maybe the contacts might still be okay. Maybe, 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 please. Oh man, why did they do this? This sort of crap, I definitely will yell at the engineers about. The whole, let's fold it back and make it impossible to do any work on it. Now let's have a look. We'll use some of our water mix. Where am I? Why are you guys over there? None of them are burned through, so that's a good sign. It just looks terrible. That's all. It looks we can hide with makeup and lighting and loud music and drugs in the drinks. Oops, describing the rave DJ night scenes and nightclubs. I was always glad that I never met any dates at nightclubs. It was always such a shock the next day, I think, based on the reaction of some friends of mine when they would get up the next day. Someone's sending me... Oh. Um, okay, I've got to answer some things here. So 3.30 will be fine. 3.30 please. Someone else is sending me stuff. Two more boards to send. 14.66. Not reading SSD. Sounds good. Uh, sounds good to me. Okay. Send them on. In. Yeah, shock horror. Paul uses an iPhone. Right. Well, if the keyboard itself isn't actually damaged, then I think this is a perfectly acceptable flex. It's got a little bit of rust stain in it, but none of those contacts have um, been etched through or anything like that, so I think that's actually okay. It just looks a little ugly. 
but of course the key is did it go through the keyboard if it went through the keyboard then it's game over and someone just damn it amazingly none of those screws fell out it's a miracle so that basically means we're um, pretty much done so I've just got to replace this trackpad and test the keyboard and then it should be able to go back to the person if that's all working the trackpad won't add too much more to the cost but um, I will check with them and if they get a bit squirmish about it then I might have to see what else I can do looks like someone's watching me oh dear <laughs> Thanks, Nick, watching me. Oh, it's a it's a double O one six five, by the way. Unless you were watching the previous stream. Yeah, let's have a look at this trackpad. But yeah, see that's kind of pushing your luck. If I can make this work, I would use it as a test one, but um, yeah, I'm not sure I'd be willing to do that. Interesting to know that they have the um, the memory chips on these. I'm not sure what they would contain, but it's interesting that they have them. We'll give this a water wash as well. Ah, come on. Chew your arm off types, uh, yeah. Like so, I shouldn't speak like that. But yeah, there are certain days where on both both sides of the gender I've seen some female friends of mine look horrified as they realised what's happened. And then you gotta go in and be the wingman. Oh not the wingman, the um the fake fake date or something like that. <sighs> Thankfully, I didn't do that too often. I didn't care to really. Most of the time, if I was with someone, it was because I was <sighs> planning something, I guess. But that pin is voluntarily gone, so yeah, that's not going to work. Not going to work at all. Yeah, that's a bin job. Oh well. Alrighty. Okay, well in that case I think we're um, we packed up. We've got the whole backlight area fixed up and you know, we've checked out our boots. The screen works thankfully. I was worried there because there was a bit of uh, eating into the screen cable, the connector that goes into the socket that we just replaced. And if that happens then you have to replace the whole cable and that's really no fun at all. I don't even do it. Speaking of which, if anyone in Australia does do that sort of replacement, you know, the cable replacement on 1466 screens, please let me know because I would like to, you know, now and then send a screen down to get that job done. Uh, I know I can send it down to like Broadway computers, but I think they do a complete assembly replacement rather than the cable only. The Chinese, yeah, that would fix it, yeah. I'm just looking to see if I've missed anything important. I probably have, but who knows. Alright, well, I'm going to leave it at that. I'll go deal with some other jobs, and I'll um, go see what the customer wants to do about the trackpad, and see what my options are going to be. So thank you everyone for jumping in, giving me your time watching, giving me your money too. Thank you. I always appreciate those. And uh, maybe we'll have some more jobs tomorrow. Until then, you all take care. Watch out for the bunyips. Don't let the dingoes drag you off. It's nasty out there in Australia, and I'll see you next time.